What's up everyone, it's Be The Installer here and I have the 85 inch 8K Sony Z9K mini LED TV to show you. And I'm super excited to check it out, see how good this TV is, see what mini LED has done for Sony in their best flagship TV that they have this year. I'm on location in New York City at the Value Electronics TV shootout and we got here a day early so we could help bring all these cool TVs in. So thankful to Value Electronics and Robert Zahn and definitely check out the links in the description if you're looking to buy a TV like this. All right, so this 85 inch has a top flap here and some connectors on the bottom and we just lift it off the top. So we'll go ahead and show you guys that. Now this one just, there we go. <laughs> All right, so we have the very sleek looking stand here. Very nice metal finish to it. Very straightforward, just pop them right in couple screws go in there so grab the other one out if the premium stand is to tell you anything this TV is going to be pretty good all of the Sony TVs this year have been coming with a good amount of plastic here to cover up the back it's got a pretty cool design we'll show you that in a bit oh and this is cool you get a new camera with these TVs so the A95K and the Z9K come with a Bravia cam that can track and you can do streaming, it's in 4K. So really excited to connect this and see how it looks. So weird how they do that. And of course the bag of goodies, you got some batteries and some zip ties and all that power cord. But the main thing that I wanted to check out is this remote. It's got the cool remote here with the uh, metal finish and the backlight control. So we'll, we'll connect this and show you that in a bit. This back, get these clips right here. Three in the front. AK. Careful, careful. Ooh, easy, easy. <laughs> Flip it. All right. Got that, I'm gonna take this one. Thank you. Of course, Jen is not here. You can see that Eric's helping me with this. He's a very good editor and very good helper, but doesn't have quite as fancy a pants as Jen does. But you know, I think you look fine. You look, you're very snazzily dressed. Thank you. All right, let's get on. Should we get this thing off? Let's do it. Let's take this one off. All right. Make sure this isn't too tippy. Yeah, it's pretty tippy. I'm gonna stay over here. So we're gonna lay this down and we would put the feet on and show you that, but we actually have to put this up onto a cart and wheel it in for the 8K shootout. So we're gonna put the box down, lay the TV on. I'll show you how the feet go on real quick, but we're gonna just stick the mount on and throw it up on that stand. So we'll do that now. So let's go ahead and just lay this down. Got some more plastic pieces in the back. I think there's like six in total for the TVs. It was the same on the X95K too. Let's slide it back. Ready? One, two, three. There we go. Nice and easy. All right, I like it. So there's three different ways you can put these feet on. You can set them in the middle here, which is a pretty low profile, or you can set them on the edge here, low profile, or you can lower them and give yourself some space. So if you had a soundbar speaker down there, or just to give it perspective on your stand, you'll get a little bit more room under it. I think that is the best look to have it up a little bit, but I also like the low profile stand if you don't have a soundbar under it. So on this side, you have all the connectivity. You have four HDMI ports. This one is just the regular port, it looks like. This, these two here say 4K at 120 and HDMI three is the eARC or ARC port. And then there's a third one that says 4K 120 and it says 8K. So you have multiple options here, which is great. You have your speaker input connections here that you can use in order to make this your center channel. The TV itself can be the center channel. And then you also have your cable antenna and you have all the other connections that you'd be used to. And then here I have the actual 4K Bravia cam. Pretty awesome, pull the plastic off that. Looks pretty cool, you can actually turn it on and off. And then this connects right here. So I'll actually just connect it now. It just snaps in place, there you go. And now it's connected. 
and it rolls over the top when the TV comes on. Or if you don't want the Bravia cam on, you can go ahead and just put this cover plate over it. That's the seventh piece of plastic they give you to get this cool looking back right here. And lastly, we have the 400 by 400 Visa pattern, which we're gonna need in order to put the brackets on and put this up on the cart to compare against the other TVs like the Z2 and the QN 900B 8K 85 and 80 inch TVs. Make sure you check those videos out too because I definitely have those. But let's put this on the stand and get it done. Dude, I can hardly reach out. These things are so big. I can barely reach to the center. We'll pull these screws off and pop the bracket right on. The reason I'm putting a washer on the bottom screw and not the top is because the top has a very small hole. The bottom one has an elongated hole, which I'm a little bit more concerned about it slipping through. So I want to make sure that it's secured on the bottom there and this one cannot slip through the top one. Okay, so we're good there, very secure. Now it's time to stand it up and put it on the cart. So we're going to swing the cart in and get it all set up and show you guys this is the finished product. You ready to do this? Should we tip it back up, stand it on this, and then we'll lift it again? Let's do it. All right. Gotta grab it. This TV's not light. It may be mini LED, but it's mega large. <laughs> I think we should go all the way under it. Sure. I got it ready. All right. There we go. Piece of cake, man. Never in question. Looks amazing. Should we just take this off while we're here? Yeah, let's do it. Let's get this off. The big reveal. Ooh, that's nice. I like it. All right, so we have this TV set up here. It looks really cool, but in order to like really make it look nice, we're gonna spin it around and then get the camera locked in so we can give you guys the best viewing of this TV. So give us a second and we'll do that. Something we noticed here on the bottom is that unlike the 4K speakers that have the tweeters on the side, these actually have various speakers on the bottom facing forward, which obviously is gonna bring much better sound quality than your typical LED TV or mini LED. So really awesome. I think they've done a lot of good work with this Z9K, but I think we need to turn it on to really see the results. And here is the infamous Sony backlit remote with the silver bezel. Honestly, this is probably the most perfect remote I've seen to date. I really like that they eliminated the one through zero buttons and that they have it just more dialed in. It just has a smaller look, very nice backlight. The only issue is that the other backlit remote sucked a lot of battery. So I hope that this one, they can last a little longer, but you know what? I have rechargeable batteries now because of that. So I'm okay with it. Let's turn this sucker on and maybe I'll show you the backlit remote in a dark room too. Let's do it. While I have your attention, let me tell you about this new app that I've been using. Because you can get yourself brand new electronics at huge discounts just by using it. It's called Deal Dash. How it works is they've got hundreds of auctions going on that you can bid on from tablets to TVs to cars and PS5s. And all the auctions start at $0 and every item is brand new. I've even seen a Nintendo Switch sell for $36. That's crazy. And Deal Dash makes it super easy to bid on products you want. You just sign up for Deal Dash and buy yourself a bid package. And you can buy anywhere from 10 to 20, 100, or even a thousand bids and then you just use those bids on all the discounted products on the app scrolling through the deals i found this nintendo switch with the red and blue joy con which would make for an awesome christmas gift so i'm going to get in on this bidding so i just go down here and say that i want to place a bid and look now i'm the top bidder but let's say i get outbid like i did there but i want to keep bidding so i can win this thing i just come down here and put that i want to place 20 bids so now i can just sit back and relax while deal dash makes sure that i stay the top bidder and best of all, every item you win comes with free shipping, so you never have to worry about extra shipping costs. And because Deal Dash is sponsoring this video, they wanted to give my followers a special deal. So go down to the description below and go to dealdash.com forward slash be the installer and use my code be the installer to get 100 free bids when you get your first bid pack. That link is in the description below, so go check it out and win yourself a new tablet or TV or an Xbox. Do it now, and thanks to Deal Dash for sponsoring the video.
Okay, so we have the 8K Z9K turned on and we have to go into the settings for a couple of things. One, we wanna make sure that the power saving kind of stuff is disabled so that if you are trying to get it at its peak brightness and all that, you don't wanna have the power and energy situation being disabled. So we have to make sure that's all off. And to unlock all the features of the TV, of course, we gotta connect it to Wi-Fi. So let's do that. And once we do that, we can show you the operating system and move forward into the different kinds of content and testing. Okay, here we are on the home screen. So this is the Google TV operating system. It has a lot of good features. Obviously, it's very similar to the Android OS of previous years, but this is the second year where it's been labeled Google TV. It just gives you a little bit more variety and gives you a little bit better of a home page in which to kind of organize the different apps that you use, give you all these things down the list here where you can continue watching shows you've already watched, see some of the movies that are on the apps you have and some of them that are just recommended and so on and so forth, and you can just keep going forever and ever, including YouTube videos, Mr. Beast, good stuff. One of the nice things about the Google TV operating system that I didn't think that I'd like, but I use quite often, is backing out and using the ambient mode, where it's very easy just to press the back button a couple times, and then once you're here, you can just go left or right and see all kinds of different pictures from various artists, along with the time in the bottom right corner. You can remove that if you want, but overall, it's just pleasant, if your TV's gonna be on, to have all kinds of different backgrounds that you can go through, and it's just one of those things. You'll use it or you won't, but being someone that liked the Samsung frame as a TV, this is pretty cool. But what we wanted to show you is some of the SDR content, the standard dynamic range, where it'll show us how good that this 8K TV can upscale and how bright it is and how colorful. So let's get into YouTube TV and check that stuff out. So basketball is one of those things that's pretty challenging for a lot of TVs to do, especially in SDR. You have a lot of moving parts. You have to upscale a lot and fast motion and upscaling is not easy to do even on a 4K, let alone an 8K TV. But I have to say the TV is incredibly bright and vibrant. There's definitely a ton of brightness, but you know, it is a little bit pixelated compared to some of the other TVs that we've used as well. So when you're talking about upscaling or processing power, when the people are larger or it's a bigger subject, or maybe it's not moving quite as fast. It looks very sharp, but if you get into an area where there's a lot of people moving around, it looks a little bit pixelated and it's not the best upscaling I've ever seen. So motion looks okay, but the upscaling leaves a little bit to be desired when it's on something fast paced like basketball. Golf's not quite as fast paced as basketball and it looks a little better to be honest, but still the upscaling isn't quite as good as something like the LG Z2 8K. Again, that's a $30,000 8K OLED. So you'd expect it to be a little better with regards to the processing than a TV one third of the price, but I have to say it definitely is. So this isn't to say that the Z9K is bad. You just think that with the XR processor and the 8K version that you'd get a little bit more definition than this. But let's see how it looks with some HDR content that we normally use. We'll watch a little animated HDR movies and see how this Sony 8K performs. Okay, so now we have incredibly bright and vibrant HDR via Encanto, which is a great way for us to compare and contrast different TVs, see which ones are bright, see which ones can handle shadow detail. And this Z9K is incredibly bright and vibrant, being that it's a mini LED TV from Sony. So no complaints with regards to how bright it can get or how much color volume it has, definitely great. And it also looks better now that we're upscaling 4K to 8K versus lower resolution content. So there isn't as much pixelization, really no issues there. Another scene in this movie that we've used quite often is this where they're under the bed, darker hair, hard to see sometimes when you have poor shadow detail control of a TV, so you don't have great control of that backlight or dimming zones. You normally can't see as much detail as you can on something like an OLED, but this TV handles that pretty well. You'd see a lot of detail in the hair, you see a lot of detail overall, and yet it can get so bright on the other end. So definitely a win with regards to animated HDR movies, but let's check out a movie in widescreen because that's one of the things when you have an LED or mini LED is that you wanna check out how it can do in dark room performance. So when you watch something in widescreen or with subtitles, you might notice that blooming. So let's check that out. Okay, so watching Doctor Strange 2 in the beginning scene here with the subtitles on, you can definitely see from straight on even that there is a bit of blooming. Probably more than I would expect an 8K mini LED TV to have. Now this is the first generation of mini LED for Sony, so there's definitely going to be improvements year over year, but I wish it had a little less blooming to consider this for a dark room. And some would say that if I'm getting a bright mini LED 8K TV from Sony, that I wanna have it in a brighter room, otherwise I get an OLED for 
a dark room, and that might be the case. But we definitely need to see how much blooming there is on this TV compared to some of the other ones. So I'm going to jump into some tests, including the blooming test and then a dirty screen test to see how uniform this panel is before we wrap up. So there's definitely some good and bad things to talk about with regards to the blooming for this Sony 8K TV. Now there is some blooming, that's the bad news. I mean, I think that's the case with any LED TV that we've reviewed. But on the other hand, it's a good thing because this TV is so bright that it kind of drowns out the blooming. So in some scenes you may notice it and other scenes are gonna be so bright you won't. But if you're gonna be watching movies that are in widescreen or if you watch things with subtitles, you're going to notice there's blooming in this where there isn't in an OLED. So if you're going to be watching in a dark room or or watch a lot of movies in widescreen, this may not be the TV for you. But if you can afford to get an 85 inch 8K and you just mostly watch sports and news and full screen content in a brighter room, I think you'd be quite happy. Another test that we want to use is the dirty screen effect test where we watch the hockey player go across the screen left to right and if you focus on that hockey player then it allows you to see the different uniformity issues behind there that sort of look like dirt on the screen. And this Z9K is not perfect with regards to this test. Now there have been panels that I've looked at that are much worse but when you're throwing down big bucks for an 8K TV you'd like to know that they've taken the time to make sure they only have good panels on the market. And I'd have to say that this is not the best that I've seen from Sony. So for me personally, this mini LED has a couple of the things that I fear most when buying a new TV, which is that the screen uniformity is not great and there is some blooming from this mini LED panel. But we need to wrap up on a positive note, so let's throw on some 8K footage. So there is some good news, which is that 8K content looks amazing on this TV. Extremely bright and vibrant. And I really think that if they had more 8K content, people would buy 8K TVs. We have actually been talking a lot about that at this shootout. Is 8K necessary or is 4K good enough? Let me know what you think about that in the comments for sure. But is 8K and brightness alone good enough for you? Or are there still things that concern you with regards to LED or mini LED? Or are you just an OLED person in general? Let me know all that in the comments below. Make sure to smash the like button, subscribe to the channel, set the notification bell to all. And just like that, we turned all the lights off and turned the TV off so you can see how cool this backlit remote works. And then you can be the installer.